Humans can be social assets. Humans can be social liabilities. A social asset is a human that empowers you in some way. You may share a friendship with them. They make you happy. You feel understood. Or there may be a business bond. Whatever the case is, the ultimate feeling is synergy. The sum of the parts is greater than the isolated parts. However, a social liability is a toxic person. This is the group of people that leaves you feeling drained. The sum of the parts is lesser than the isolated parts. It's sad because these people can sneak up on you. A lot of times,、uh, people stay close to toxic people because they are unaware that the human is toxic in the first place. Very sad predicament to be in. You'll typically notice that a toxic person brings down the empowering force, rather than the other way around. Be selfish with your time. If someone doesn't respect it, then distance or cut them off altogether. Today, I'm going to share ten common signs of toxic people. Stay on the lookout. If you're someone who is leveling up, you'll find out that there is an abundance of humans who are a draining force. Scope them out. Ten signs to rule them all. Sign number one, they're a mooch. You ever met someone who only hits you up when they need something, and when they do, they're very friendly. When they hit you up, they create small talk to paint the illusion that they care. You guys speak and pick up right where you left off. Then, they ask for the favor. Favors are fine every now and then, but some toxic people use favors to sneak more time and attention. It wouldn't be much of a problem if they would reciprocate from time to time, but a mooch is a mooch. The best way to spot them, they take way more than they give, and in a lot of situations, they don't give at all. Sign number two: liar, liar, pants on fire. Lying is a tricky situation to evaluate. What is considered a lie to one person may be considered true to someone else. You ever met that one person who told you the truth, but not really?、Uh, these are the people who strategically leave parts of the story out. Say that your parents gave you a curfew of 10 p.m. You're not allowed to step outside the door any time after that. Well, what if you climb out the window? Your parents never said anything about the window. Although you knew what your parents meant, you warped the words around, and if they asked you. If you broke the curfew, technically you can say, "Not by your standards, mom and dad." But in reality, we know it was a lie. This group of toxic people knows how to leave out information, or twist information, to give off the illusion of the truth, or sometimes they just flat out lie. Sign number three, the negative Nancy. If you're a negative person. Then you may find the negative Nancy to be quite pleasant. You two can just endlessly whine away. However, if you're someone who considers yourself a person of improvement, then negativity eventually takes its toll. It doesn't feel like an impact at first, but over time, it gets draining. The human has to poke holes in everything, hang with them too long, and it's easy to feel tired. The sad truth is that the world has a lot of negative people. We can't always avoid them, so if you can't avoid them, then view them as a workout to build thick skin. Sign number four: the bully. A bully is defined as a person who habitually seeks to harm or intimidate those who they perceive as vulnerable. The bully can strike via physical and/or verbal force. And look at that definition again. You'll notice the word habitually. Yes. It's the habit of the bully to put others down. Just because they're not doing it to you in the present moment, doesn't mean that they won't do it later on. This group of people also lack social intelligence. If you introduce them to a group of people, then they may just spend time making fun of you in front of the others to win them over. In reality, they're not winning anyone over. Annoying creatures who are simply too unaware to grow up. Sign number five. The secret spiller. The point of a friend is to have someone you can talk to about real stuff, stuff that you can't talk to with an acquaintance about. I thought an acquaintance and a friend were the same thing, Armani. Nope. 
An acquaintance is someone who you are formal with. A friend is someone who you are informal with. You need both in order to develop a social circle. However, when you have a friend that is always spilling your secrets, that causes you to be hesitant around them. The hesitancy reduces the energy force around you too. This group may spill a secret by accident, or they may be a snake in disguise. When they spill a secret by accident, it shows a lack of judgment. When they spill the secret on purpose, it shows that they thrive off drama. It's hard cutting off a friend because we feel like they get us. Unfortunately, this friend is a snake, a fake friend to the core. Sign number six: the incessant angry drunk. I had this one friend in college who was very cool, great guy that was super social. But over time, I noticed he would always get drunk in social situations. Occasionally, it's whatever, but it started to become a habit. There are two kinds of drunk people: one, the person who gets happier and chill; two, the person who gets furious and dramatic. Let's just say that this friend was in the latter boat. Remember this: alcohol doesn't make you do something you would never do. It makes it easier to do things you always wanted to do. If someone is always getting angry when they are drunk, you need to watch out. Sign number seven: the habitual gossiper. As you start leveling up, you'll notice your mind evolving as well. When you partake in productive actions for long enough, your neural pathways begin rewiring for the best. This causes your conversation topics to evolve as well. Unfortunately, the masses aren't leveling up like you. They're going to be talking about the same stuff they've been talking about for ages, and that is people. Yep, most people only know how to gossip. I'm not saying you can't ever do it. Sometimes you may bring up others to make a point, but when that's all you can talk about, that's a huge issue. When you get near someone who loses all energy when you aren't gossiping, that'll get draining real quick. Sign number eight: the ego maniac. You ever met that one person who always had to be right, or they always had to be the person that broke the news? If you try telling a story to these people, they'll find a way to make it about them. That gets annoying. They don't mean harm all the time. They may be unaware. However, when you are telling a story, You'll typically be able to tell from their eyes whether they're paying attention or not. Instead, they're seeing how your story relates to them. Once they find the relation, they will cut you off and make the story about them. This has you feeling unheard. After a while, resentment may grow. Sign number nine: the debater. Some people like debating. If you're one of those people, then have at it. But I can assure you. That many don't find the act appealing. At times, it's fine, but over time, it gets annoying. Debating is sometimes necessary to stick up for what you believe in and make some valid points, but other times, it becomes too much. A big part of social intelligence is knowing when to keep your opinions to yourself. It shows maturity when you are willing to understand someone else's perspective. Rather than just trying to verbalize yours all the time, this group needs to learn the art of falling back. Sign number ten: overly competitive. A friendly competition is fun at times; it can bring out the best in you. But when someone is too competitive, the act becomes draining. It's hard to be around someone who's always looking to one up you. This group can also turn into snakes very quickly, because once you win. Or are surpassing them in a certain facet of life, they get resentful. Rather than being happy for you, they feel like you took something from them. Overly competitive people are operating with a fear-based and scarcity mindset. It's hard to teach them anything about abundance. Signs of toxic people to keep you aware. I'm sure you recognize some of these traits in others. I'm sure you recognize some of these traits in yourself. One of the biggest signs of growing up is realizing that you were the toxic one in many of your relationships. Only toxic people can't ever admit when they were wrong. Ask yourself, which of these signs resonated with you? Toxicity is a death by one thousand cuts. 
you don't notice it at first. It's a little energy going out one day, then some more energy the next day. The process repeats, and eventually you get to a point when you are losing your zest for life. The signs of toxic people speak right to your subconscious mind, so stay aware. Humans love familiarity, but when that familiarity is turning toxic, that's when you need to show the person the door. It's a tough decision, but no one said that the level up journey was going to be easy. Look out for yourself and bring the winners in. For more practical social skills insights, be sure to sign up for the Armani Talks newsletter. In this newsletter, you will learn more about social intelligence, public speaking, creative writing, and much more. Join the tribe by checking out the links in the description, or go on armanitalks.com/newsletter and sign up today.